Welcome to the Parsha Perspective. Each week, we will delve deep in a weekly Torah portion to find a practical and insightful way to enhance your daily life. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Rabbi Shalom Yimini, and each week we will look into the weekly Torah portion to find practical and insightful ways to enhance your daily life. This week's Parsha Perspective is in honor of our homeland, Eretz Yisrael. May Kaddish Baruch may God protect our brave soldiers, and may God return all the hostages from Gaza immediately. This week's Parsha Perspective is in honor of the Refu Shalema of Rav Amitai Ben Shoshana and Hinda Bas Ado. May they and all those who need to experience have a speedy and complete recovery. This week's Parsha Perspective is in loving memory of Edward Ben Ephraim, Shlomo Ben Edward, and Yerachim Daniel Ben Gedalia. May the souls be uplifted and may the memory be blessing. Before I begin, the release date of this episode, the 22nd of Shvat, coincides with the yard site with the anniversary of passing of Rebbe Chaim Mishka, the wife of the Lubavitcher Rebbe. Along with being the daughter of the great Friedrich Rebbe, the previous Chabad Rebbe, she was the partner in any campaign or action the Rebbe undertook. And in her merit may we experience the ultimate redemption and the coming of Mashiach. This week's Torah portion is Parshas Yisrael, the most capable leader. Our Parsha has the Aseris HaDibris, the Ten Commandments, making it one of the most significant portions of the Torah. Hashem Himself came down the mountain and said the Ten Commandments, confirming that we are His chosen nation. Just six weeks after leaving Egypt, the Jewish nation arrived at the foot at Mount Sinai. Moshe Rabbeinu instructs them to purify themselves for three days in preparation for the giving of the Torah. They could not approach or touch the mountain, for it is holy and pure, and only Moshe and Aaron were allowed to touch it or be on it. On the morning of the third day, the shoifer's piercing sound grew louder as smoke, thunder, and lightning covered the mountain top. HaKadosh Baruch Hu God descended on Harsinai as a terrified and frightened Jewish nation gathered around its base. God then said the Aserah the Ten Commandments to the trembling and traumatized Jewish nation. So overwhelmed, they turned to Moshe Rabbeinu and begged him to act as an intermediary, for God's holy and divine words were more than they could physically handle. And Moshe Rabbeinu agreed but responded, Don't fear God, for he has shown you himself, so that you fear him and not sin. However, a question comes to mind. Just prior to the Jewish nation receiving the Torah on Har Sinai on Mount Sinai, Yisrael gave his son-in-law some unsolicited advice. He says to Moshe Rabbeinu that he should establish a system with judges and rabbis to answer the nation's questions and solve their disputes. Yisrael reasons that Moshe will wear himself out and be unable to lead properly if Moshe does it all alone. He says, You shall seek out from the nation capable individuals who fear God, honest men who will hate bribes. But why did Yisrael not add the criteria that judges should be smart and knowledgeable? How could they determine and adjudicate cases if they aren't learned and educated on Torah laws? Why didn't Yisrael add that judges and rabbis must be Torah scholars to settle disputes and answer questions? The Ranban Rav Moshe ben Nachman gives an interesting explanation. He writes that the term Anshechayel, capable men, or capable individuals, indicates that those whom Moshe would have chosen would have significant torn knowledge to judge the people, to answer their questions, to settle their disputes. And they would be great Torah scholars with a deep understanding of the Torah laws, rules, and regulations that God set upon His chosen nation. According to the Ramban, the brilliance, the ability of potential judges is inherent to the qualifications of leading the Jewish people. He quotes Moshe Rabbeinu in Sefer Devarim, where Moshe recounts the requirements of leadership within the Jewish nation. Moshe Rabbeinu says, You shall pick men from each tribe, men who are wise, discerning, and experienced, and I will appoint them as tribal leaders. However, the Balaturim of Yaakov ben Usher gives a deeper and more profound explanation. He agrees that Torah knowledge is a prerequisite to being a dying, to being a judge, but it is not the most important element of adjudicating cases. Yisrael's recommendation was not to find the smartest men to judge the nation. 
rather to find the most capable people to settle disputes and lead the nation into the next phase of their life. The Bala term explains that the qualifications of the judges are much more than just understanding the laws of the Torah and its regulations. A proper judge first has an immense fear of God, and then be honest, capable, wise, and trustworthy. A dying, a judge must always act and be above board and recognize that they represent something far greater than themselves. The term Anshichayel, capable individuals, is ambiguous only because it includes many characteristics. They must be God-fearing, honest, wise, fair, and confident. They should pursue justice for the sake of justice alone and be an example for the nation to aspire to. Similar to an Aishas Chayel, a woman of valor, who is the holiness, who is the bedrock of her home, judges and leaders are the foundation of our society and must be God-fearing and above board before any other quality. This profound lesson in leadership is relevant as we reflect on the life of Rebbe Tzinchayim Mishka, the wife of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, a beacon of modesty. Her life teaches us the profound impact of inner strength and quiet influence. As the Rebbe's wife and partner, Rebbe Tzinchayim Mishka could have been immersed in fame, in admiration. And yet she chose a path of exceptional modesty, influencing profoundly in a gentle yet powerful manner. Her strength flowed from an inner fountain of faith, courage, and dedication to the Jewish people. In a world often captivated by external fame, her life remains a testament to true essence of influence and character. In our daily life, we often encounter different forms of leadership. From our homes to our communities, the impact of a great leader is unmistakable. Yet true leadership goes far beyond mere management. It is rooted in qualities that transcend conventional skill sets. A leader who embodies faith in God and an honesty sets the standard that inspires others to do the same. There's a powerful quote from Rabbi Sachs of Blessed Memory on his essay on leadership. He says, Leadership is, I have argued, the acceptance of responsibility. And therefore, if we are all responsible for one another, we are all called upon to be leaders each within our own sphere of influence, be within our families, friends, or our communities, and together we will change the world. Have a great weekend and good Shabbos. Thank you for tuning in to The Parsha Perspective. Check out our website, theparshaperspective.com. Send thoughts and comments to theparshaperspective at gmail.com. Till next time, thanks for listening. Thank you.